What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 35. We start today's episode by seeing that Brandon Cooper is returning to training after injury. However, after our big win over Coventry and two wins in our last three, we now have 12th place in the top half of the table and 13 points off West Brom. Now, of course, the Baggies do still have the game in hand. So after a little bit of a resurgence in form after a woeful start of the calendar year, mainly just the form of that man and Gavin Humphreys, who's now taken the armband as well. Cooper might be coming back but when he does step on the field, he won't be captain. I've made my decision. Gavin Humphreys is keeping the armband permanently. So, first game of today's episode, Stoke City. Now, as we know, 13 points behind the bags. If we are to catch West Bromwich Albion and make the playoffs with 10 games to go, we're going to need to be almost perfect. And I think, again, the two main players that will need to continue their good form are the two guys celebrating together here. Gavin Humphreys and, of course, Rabi Matondo. 22 it's in, gets his 17th of the season. He's chasing the golden boot, but he knows what we want more than anything is playoff football. And, and that would be my perfect birthday present as well. Yes, of course, today uh, it is my birthday. Uh, 29 years old today, as you know, no spring chicken. But uh, even so, that's that, that would be my perfect birthday present. Playoff football. That's what I want come the end of the season. After a really good start, it almost gifted Stoke a level. Nick Powell, Robin, Lloyd Payne. Do not ask me what I was trying to do there. I mean, I was dilly-dallying on that ball for so long, I was asking for trouble. Powell robs me, and thankfully Price bails me out. But three minutes after the restart, it was a really, really action-packed game here against Stoke City. Ames get our second goal. You know I can't defend one of the worst defensive teams in the division. That's one of the main reasons why we're not in the top 10 right now. But we can score and we can continue to see these two players just absolutely on fire and in sync. Rabi Matondo gets his brace connected with a great Gavin Humphreys through ball. My two players this season. I think Rabi has been slightly better, slightly more important, but Gavin as a 16 slash 17 year old. I mean, seriously, you couldn't really ask for much more from the guy that's now become club captain. So, an hour in, still leading by two. Stoke Wiggins get themselves back in the game. Brilliant finish there after a lovely first touch as the visitors find a route back into it and half deficit over 90 minutes to go. How many times have you seen me surrender leads and leads with multiple goals as well? Norton got the first and almost got the second. And had it not been for Price making a great save, I would have blown it once again. Thankfully, we did not. We held on for the big three points and back-to-back -back victories. For the first time in the calendar year, I believe. Yeah, it was a really tough start to the calendar year. January, I don't even want to talk about January, man. That was one of the worst months I've ever had in a FIBA CM. It was awful, but... After Matondo's brace, he draws level with Harry Wilson, another Welsh player. I'm loving that in the race for the Golden Boot right now. He's played five games fewer, but he's up five ratings this year. 18 goals and eight assists in 26 games. And as we know, this guy has just absolutely thrived since he became a striker. When he came in, you know, our plan was to have him on the wing. We like Ruben Cole on the left, so Matondo was a natural right winger. But after Davis and Bound went down, he became our out and out striker. And, you know, I still haven't decided to train him as a striker. I know I've been talking about it all season and I still haven't done it yet. The main reason why I think is just time, how long it will take for him to become a natural striker and again I'm, I'm still thinking about the future. I think for Isaac Davis now last year's League One Golden Boot winner, I think he's now probably become my third choice but for Alan Bound, I just keep on thinking you know, finding potential to be special players is not easy especially when you're scouting a nation uh, like Wales who of course do have quite a decent amount of young talent but as we know in the game certain countries are harder to find higher potential prospects there are certain countries that of course have better youth prospects and some which don't have the best Wales don't have the best but it's still possible you know again we, we've got Gavin Humphreys and, and Bowen coming out as well I keep thinking do I really want to you know not use a potential to be special striker and maximize his potential knowing he could get into the 90s. For Rabi Matondo, listen, mid-80s, that's definitely possible. But Bound could get to like 93, 94. Obviously, it's a long way to go, but it is possible. I think that's really my dilemma. You know, forget Isaac Davis for a second. I know he won the league one gold to boot last year, but, you know, Matondo, who has been unbelievable this year, going for the championship golden boot, or bound with the potential to be special. I just, I seriously, I'm so indecisive. I really can't choose. Anyway, second game, obviously, this is a Barnsley away at Oakwell. Ben Davis, the vet, gives us the opening goal of the game. And really, we should have been two or three goals up in the first half. I was really dominating, just couldn't find that second goal to give us a cushion. Great save by Price there, kept us leading by one. And then just past the hour mark here is Barnsley. Look for a chance to get back on level terms here. I mean, honestly, shocking, shocking defending from yours truly once again, allowing Barnsley to get the chance. But a 
fabulous save by the feet of Price. Keeps it 1-0 and eventually we scramble it clear with Terry Taylor. Price is unbelievable, man. I mean, I keep on talking about it, but the teenage goalkeeper, he's incredible. He's been brilliant ever since he became our starting goalkeeper in this year. He's not the reason why we've conceded so many goals. He makes incredible saves. And again, he's only getting better. So still leading by one. We're standing heavy pressure in the second half. I really played poorly in the second 45 minutes. But we had a chance to wrap the game up with five minutes to go. And it was that youngster off the bench, Alan Bound, who's giving me the dilemma in what to do in the striker position. I love the, the bug celebrations while just running around like a headless chicken. But Bound comes off the bench, wraps up the three points. And again, it just gives me that real dilemma. Bound or Matondo, I just cannot decide because Bound's going to take a long time to get good, but we know this guy has the potential to be special. So back-to-back -back wins, three straight, and Newport County have cut the gap on West Brom to seven points. Yes, back-to-back -back defeats for the Baggies. We cut it to seven. Now, it is true they still have the game in hand. They still have the far superior goal difference, and luckily for them as well. We're going to have six players missing for the fixture against West Brom away. Can you believe that? How typical is that? Yeah, players going away in international duty. Ruben Cole, Dylan Leather. You know, several of our first team uh, score going away on international duty with Wales. They're only going to miss one fixture. And it's the biggest game of the season. How typical is that? West Brom away at the Hawthorns. Right now, faltering, stumbling a little bit. Away at the Hawthorns. And we're going to miss six of our first team regulars. How frustrating is that? But there's, there's still a chance. We're, we're keeping ourselves in the hunt. I said it was what I wanted for my birthday present. Catch up to the baggies and give ourselves the best possible chance of the playoffs. Well, taking on Sunderland for the following game here. Back at Rodney Parade thinking, OK, all right, Sunderland not having a great season. Struggling down the bottom of the table. This should be a win. Well, I've been praising him throughout the course of the episode. But that was a bit of a gaff. Yeah, Lee Price were really, really, really big mistake there. Shot straight at him. He just fumbles it into the bottom corner. And Sunderland take the lead. He will make up for it soon afterwards though and that's just goalkeepers in this year's FIFA I've mentioned it so many times before but you have to take their mistakes with a pinch of salt because ultimately like, they'll make a lot more saves of course but I mentioned it's it's realistic and I am kind of liking it as well we're seeing so many more mistakes from goalkeepers this year one there give this sudden lead however we would respond 31 minutes into the game Gavin Humphreys getting a little bit lucky but we will take it first shot save it straight back to him as our captain turns in the rebound so Newport 1 Sunderland 1 I thought this would be a bit of a banker to be honest Matondo hit the post just past Yama, but after big wins in our last two games, I really thought we'd come through this one against the struggling Black Cats with a pretty simple victory. Instead, it was nothing like that. I didn't get that many chances in the game, not too many clear cut ones. And our final one came with three minutes to go. Rabbi Matondo outpacing his men down left hand side, stepping in field, but again, a good stop keeps it at 1 1. So, yeah, disappointing slip up there. And I mentioned at the start of the episode, really, if we are to make the playoffs, we need to be almost perfect. And you know, in the championship, it's just such a competitive division. And it means that even when you're taking on teams that are towards the bottom of the table, it's still very, very tough to come through at times. And as you can see, that draw there keeps the gap at seven. West Brom again lost for the third straight game. So talk about your missed opportunities. We could have cut the gap to five. And if we were to beat the bags at the Hawthorns, we'd cut it to two with six games to go. Talk about a massive missed opportunity there against Sunderland. However, with the baggies losing three straight, no one saw that coming. Travis and Hawthorns, yes, we were missing six of our regular first team starters including Price, including Matondo. I still felt as though, after no defeats in our last four and three wins in our last five, we had a golden chance here to get the win and really put the pressure on West Brom and cut it to four with six to go. The bags had the first chance. Ben Brereton Diaz, Chile fan favourite, firing wide as it was still 0-0. And in 25 minutes, we had our first chance coming on the break. Gavin Humphreys, a lovely ball roll to beat his man. What a brilliant through ball to the man who's so good, they named him twice. And Lloyd Lloyd smashes it into the top corner. I've been really liking this guy on the right wing. He doesn't always get involved in our goals or assists, but he's very clinical when going through one-on-one -on -one and gives us the opening goal at the Hawthorns. And I was thinking, okay, here we go. If we win this, the gap cut to four and the pressure on the baggies would be relentless after four straight losses. But right before the break, sucker punch. Baggies get back on level terms. Lovely through ball and a great finish past our standing goalkeeper Simmons. And it's 1-1. So in the second half, I was thinking, OK, do we, do we just take the draw, leave things as they are, or be brave and go for the win? We're 68 minutes in. It's a great through ball. And Humphreys gets in, of course. If any player was to restore our lead, you'd put your money 
money on this guy. No Ravi Matondo, no Ruben Colwell. Missing some big names for the game. But Gavin Humphrey stayed with Newport County. Didn't go away with Wales and gets his 11th in 33 and one of the biggest of the season. He's averaging a goal in every three games, Gavin. West Brom 1, Newport County 2. We're back in front of him. Okay, all right. I know my defense is poor, but please, 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 please. Hang on to the big three points. Well, sometimes you just don't get the luck. Shot from just outside of the area. Cannons off the crossbar. And Simmons might have come in for prize in this game as our standing goalkeeper. But you can't blame him for that one. Shot hits the woodwork. Comes down. Just hits the goalkeeper on the back, on the floor. And Matt Phillips turns in the rebound for the simplest finish you'll have in his career. So unlucky. Nothing I could have done about that one. There was the bag. He's fine. There. Just one of those things. One of those things. With 11 minutes to go, a chance to restore our lead for the third time in the game. Home for it's the post and West Brom get it away. Yeah, I thought I was going to win it there through Gavin off the woodwork and the baggies were clear. So back to back draws against Sunderland and away against West Brom. They'll take the point. We needed to win more than they did. But to be fair, missing six of our first team regulars on international duty. i got to say, I thought it was unfortunate to win that game. But 2-2 two -two the final score and it means with six games to go. We are not giving up just yet. A nice unbeaten run. No defeats in our last five. And only just one loss in our last seven. Millwall have now gone into the playoffs. We're nine points behind them. Six games to go. We'll know we need to be almost perfect if we're going to catch the Lions. But I'll give it my best shot. It's not over yet. The playoffs is still possible with six games to go. But that will end season for the club and country, guys. Big fan. If you watch your video, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country. Very soon.